All right, so we've been tracking our buck for a little while now, and we just got another grunt, and there he is right there. He looks like a decent one. I can't quite tell. Oh, that's a big buck. That's a huge buck. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We did it, we did it. Come on, here he is, here he is. Hello everyone, this is the Hunter DV33, and welcome back to the Hunter Classic. Today we're out here on Logos Point, and we're going to be going after some muley bucks. Hopefully we can find a big mounter. I want to find a 220 plus, but we'll see what we can find. First off, I want to give a special thanks to Ninja Hunter 79, Chance Robbins, and Ian Eckstein. Thank you guys so much for all the support of the channel, and let's get this hunt started. Alright, so we just got a call from a whitetail buck, right over here by this tent. Now, I'm pretty sure he was actually coming in to the first call that we put out over there. So we gotta be careful that he doesn't get too close to us. Also, the bad part is there's some brush right here and he might walk right into there and we won't be able to see him. So what I wanna do is put out a call and wait about two or three minutes and put out one more call. Then I wanna sneak over to this ridge right there, right on that hill and see if this buck doesn't come in right to the call. All right, guys, we have eyes on the buck. He looks like a 120s buck, so we'll get ready on him a little bit. 120 to 140, not a bad score estimate, but he's definitely not gonna break 130s, that's for sure. So we'll let him come a little bit closer and we'll get over here by this rock and see if we can't get a shot on him. Yeah, he can't see us from there, he's not that smart. All right, he's coming in now. I wasn't sure if he was actually gonna come in or not, because we could definitely take a 70 meter shot on him with the crossbow for sure. And we still could. Alright, he's 70 meters out. So if he gets to 60, we'll definitely take a shot on him. I forgot how all the pins work on this crossbow. It's been a while since I actually took a far shot. I'm pretty sure the third pin down is 60. But he's about 45 or 50 already, so we're not going to worry about that. We'll just let him come a little bit closer and we should be able to take him out. All right, so there he is, about 40. We'll put the pin right on him. Shot was actually a little bit high. All right, so we do a body blood here. We're gonna give him about 10 minutes and we'll go track him down and see if we can't find him. All right, so while we're waiting, we have a doe coming in here and she's about 50 meters out. So we'll see if we can't take a shot on her. As soon as we load our crossbow back up. Put the second pin right about there. That should have been a solid hit. Let's go check. Yep, that should have been a liver shot. She actually took off quite a ways, but we'll be able to come find her in a second after we get our buck down. All right, so we've been tracking our buck for a little while now, and we just got another grunt, and there he is right there. He looks like a decent one. I can't quite tell. Oh, that's a big buck. That's a huge buck. Oh boy, that's a, that's a giant. Um, can we switch out to our carbon recurve quick enough? Come on, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We did it, we did it. Come on, here he is, here he is. Oh, nice hit. Big buck hit. Wow, that was a monster. He grunted right next to where the uh, buck that we had hit from before is. And I wasn't actually trying to pull out the recurve right away, but I forgot once we switched slots, it pulled it out automatically because we had that slot selected. So let's go see where we hit him. And our other buck should be laying around right over here somewhere. But boy, that was a big buck. Yep, awesome shot. We got a nice lung hit on him. So I'm pretty happy about that. And we need to get back and go track that doe, but so that's the good thing about if you hit an animal and it doesn't drop, a lot of times that potential animal that you're tracking could lead you to a big buck. And I've had it happen more often than not. I've actually had it happen to where it led me to a non-typical. So those are some pretty cool moments when that happens. But we do need to find our buck that we had hit from before. I believe this should be his track over here. All right, so we're going to mark where we just took a shot at that big buck right there about 20 meters out. And then we're going to get back on this other buck track. We're going to go track him down. 
And we'll see if we can't find both bucks here in a second. Alright, so here's the blood. It looks like they both might have ran the same direction. If we're lucky, we might run into both bucks at the same time. And that would be pretty cool. One of them's not so big, but the other one is pretty big. Alright, so we just found our first buck down. This is when we shot just a touch high at probably 45 meters out. And you can see we hit him somewhere in the neck area. Must have just missed the spine, but let's pick him up and see what he's going to score. Shoulder blade. So 42 meter shot right to the shoulder blade. If we were just a touch lower, we would have caught lung. If we were just a touch higher, we probably would have caught the neck bone. But he scores 122, so let's go find that big buck. Alright, so we just got back on our big buck track, and we still have some really good blood. We have probably three or four sets of tracks with some pretty decent blood already. So I would imagine it might have been lung and liver, so he might not go too far. Alright, so the blood actually just switched to intestine, and there's our buck down right there. Look at that. An awesome spot for him to go down. Right out in the wide open field. But we always want to be careful. There could be another buck around too. I doubt it's going to be anything bigger than the one we already got, but you never know. Also, this buck came in completely silent. He never made a call or anything until we were right on top of him. All of a sudden, he put out a call within about 50 meters away from us. We went prone. By the time we got our recurve equipped, he was within 20 meters away, and we took a shot on this big whitetail buck. I never even got a score estimate on him because, well, he came in so fast, but... He looks 170 plus for sure. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Let's take a look at him. He might be even bigger. Or he might be smaller. It's really hard to tell. Like I said, it looks like he's a big 7x7 seven seven or maybe even a big 8x8, eight eight, which definitely could make him potentially 180 plus, And that's what we need for a wall hanger. So let's pick him up and see what he's going to score. We got shoulder blade, lung, and intestine 175.6. That's a giant buck. Almost 180 plus. He might make the cutoff. He might. It's it's going to be close. He's within five points, but I might be able to drop him down a little bit and give him that extra five points just to make him go into our new lodge. Wow. That is an awesome buck. And the fact that we actually were tracking down a 120s buck that we hit in the shoulder blade led us to this buck. So an awesome buck. Let's take a really cool picture of him. Yeah, I like that a lot. I definitely like that a lot. And yeah, we're going to definitely get him mounted for sure, but I don't know if we're going to put him in our lodge. I'm pretty sure we are. He's close enough. I think he definitely deserves to go into a lodge. All right, so we got him mounted. So now what we need to do is get back on that doe track that we hit in the intestine at like 45 meters walking, and we'll go track her down and see what she leads us to. All right, so we just started tracking the doe, and she led us right to a coyote. There was a decent coyote I just saw. I never got a spotting on him, but he's coming in really fast. So we got to shift over to the left a little bit and see if we can't get a shot on this coyote. We'll keep our reverse draw crossbow loaded up just in case we need to use that, which we'll probably go, oh, there's a coyote, there's a coyote. There it is, coming in. It's uh, about 30 meters away. It's a pretty nice one. Let's pop up into, actually, we can just take a shot prone. Oh, smoked him. 45 to, or actually it was 49 to 55 score on him. And I think we made a double lung heart shot on him at about 30 meters out. So it should be, should be a 50 plus coyote, pretty decent one. Never even got a chance to look at the weight on him, but it looked pretty nice. So let's pick him up and see what he's going to score. Oh yeah, nice shot. Should have been lung and liver actually now that I look at it here. Uh, stomach intestine and he scores 50.6 so that's a really solid coyote we'll definitely take a trophy shot of him and we'll take a really cool picture 50 plus coyote is a really solid coyote and that's something to be proud of all right that's a pretty cool no it's not actually gotta get him facing this way there we go I don't think a coyote looks good when his tail is tucked between his legs, though. Got to keep him out. There. Now that is a good picture. Let's go with that. Perfect picture. And let's take a picture. Awesome. Yeah, he's close to a mounter. I guess if you've never got a 50-plus coyote, you could easily get him mounted for sure. All right, guys. So we just found our doe down right here. But we just got a call from a male bobcat right around this hill. So I want to pick this doe up. 
she actually led us quite a ways. I would say she probably ran 250, 300 meters out. So it might have been just straight and testing on her. And it was. Apparently, we hit far back. I don't know if it's because of the wind or what, because we were holding towards the front shoulder. But six minute wound time. Not bad. Let's go over here. And right where the dot is on the hunter mate is right where the male bobcat just called. So if we can get up here a little bit more. I've never actually called one in with the uh, coyote caller, but it might actually bring this one in. And since that's all we have on us right now. Oh. Ooh. He just called right there. So I don't know if he's actually coming in. It looks like he's sort of headed this direction. Which might help us out. Even if he comes a little bit this direction, we could take a pretty far shot with a reverse crossbow. He's right there. He's right there. He's coming right in. Alright, he's about 40. We're not even going to have time to range him. He's right there. He's going to bolt if we don't take a shot. Oh, I just smoked him. He's down. Didn't even flinch. Yeah, I would imagine he was about 30 out, probably. There's no way we would have had time to pull out the camel pulser on him. And I'm pretty sure we got the nice mail, so let's go over here and go check. He came in pretty fast. This is the first bobcat, actually, that I have called in with the predator call, so let's pick him up and see what he's going to score. 15.9, pretty decent one. Not quite as big as I was hoping, but still a nice male. 8.3 he scores. And look at that shot. It was about 28.9 meters out. We got head, skull, spine, shoulder blade, left lung, and intestine. So let's just say that bobcat wasn't going anywhere. And yeah, let's take a cool trophy shot of him because we got him with the reverse draw crossbow and he's a pretty decent male. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's take that picture. Let's go with that. And let's accept it. Pretty awesome. If you look at that shot, it almost looks like it must have just missed the heart, maybe a little bit higher. All right, so I want to show you where we got that big buck. And right here is where we first spotted him. And we took the shot, and he ran right to here. And we just got a call from another bobcat, but right here is exactly where that buck was located at. So if you want to know where a good whitetail spot is, well, basically this whole end here is really good for whitetail. And I guess this area here, anywhere around here, is more for mule deer. All right, so we just got down to this point here at the beach. We just found a doe here at about 60 meters out. We were tracking her for a little ways because I found some fleeing tracks, and here she is. The wind's actually blowing to the left just a little bit, so if she stops, we could definitely take a shot with the reverse draw crossbow. I don't know if she's going to stop, though. She might just keep on walking. There we go. Of course, she stopped right in the brush. Oh, I'm pretty sure that might have been a hard shot. Because we were holding the 60 right in the grass where you could, you couldn't quite make out where her body was, but I could pretty much tell where it should be and took the shot. All right, well, here she is right here, and let's take a look. We are pretty high up, so you got to remember the angle of the arrow. And if you look at that arrow, it looks like it's angled pretty downwards. So let's pick it up and see where we hit it. Ooh, we ended up getting double lung, so we must have just barely missed the heart. But still, 60 meter double lung shot on a doe pretty happy with that all right well just when i thought we couldn't get much luckier we already have a monster white tail buck we got a nice bobcat a really nice coyote and we just made an awesome shot on that doe look what we just found right around the corner an awesome muley shed right there from about a 160 170 plus muley buck so that's pretty awesome this really made my day right here all right well let's take a look at this shed that's a really nice buck that is pretty cool. I've only found maybe one or two mule deer sheds before um, in the Hunter Classic, so this is a pretty cool moment. All right, well, let's pick it up and see what it's going to score. It is a mule deer antler, and it scored 99. So that would have been like a 198 muley buck, basically a 200 plus if you round it off, depending on how many stickers the other side had. You're looking at probably a 200 plus buck right there, and we just found half of his rack, so that was pretty awesome. All right, guys, we were just tracking a male bobcat, and I can see him. He's right there. Actually, that's a female. That is a female, but there should be a male down there somewhere. I know there's definitely a male. That is indeed a female there. I would like to be able to take a shot on her. We might go for a shot right here. Let's see how far she is. She's 60. <laughs> that was a nice shot. 
And this is going to be another reason why Call of the Wild needs to introduce a crossbow. Yeah, that should have been a 60 meter heart shot. Let's check. Yep. Double lung heart shot at 60.3 meters. Wow. All right, guys, so we just peeked around the corner here right from this female, and if we actually stand up right there, you can see the male bobcat is right there. I'm not sure if he's actually headed this direction. Yeah, it looks like he is. He's facing this direction. He's probably a little bit spooked, but we'll put out a call. And we'll go prone. And I want to sneak over here by this rock right next to this tree. That way, when he comes past to get to the call, we should be able to get a nice shot on him. The only bad part is I'm pretty sure the wind is blowing right at him. So we might have to take a little bit of a shot at him here in just a second. As soon as we get on top of this rock, let's get our rangefinder out and get ready. Look at what we just found. Look at that. An awesome shed antler right there. Can't really see it right now, but what? Is that a mule deer or a whitetail? It looks like an elk. It looks like an elk antler right there. It's so hard to tell, but... I want to get a range on this bobcat. He's uh, about a hundred out there, so it's a little ways. I like being in this spot because we have a little bit of cover, and I don't know if we really want to get too much closer to him, but let's put out a call and see what happens. Yeah, from this angle, that actually looks like an elk shed antler right there. It really does, but I know there's only mule deer and whitetail out here, so... I don't know what it could be. Let's try and get a little bit closer. We might actually pick this shed up as we're getting a little bit closer to him. But first, we need to make sure we check the wind really quick here. Uh, decent. It's actually blowing a little bit to the right. I thought it was blowing to the left, but it must have switched a little bit here. And this looks like a whitetail. It's got to be a whitetail. What is that? That's got to be a whitetail rack. It is. I think it's a huge buck. I think that's a huge whitetail shed antler is what that is. It's hard to tell from right here, but let's see if we can't get a estimate. Yeah, that's definitely a monster whitetail buck shed. Holy, that's a 180 plus rack right there. Wow. Look at the mass and tines on this. I'm getting so distracted from this shed that I can't even concentrate on how big this bobcat might be. But look at how big this shed is. I've never found a whitetail shed this big. Not even close to that big. I think the biggest one I found is maybe like a 130s, but... That thing's huge. So let's get on this bobcat now and see if we can't spot him out here. This bobcat looks pretty big too. And it looks like he's starting to come this direction. 10 to 25 kg. So that is definitely going to be a 9 plus potential bobcat. So we got to get ready on him. He's about 72 meters out right now. Don't want him to come too close because like I said, he's a little bit spooked. Tell you what, we might go for a shot on this guy here. And he should be about 60 right there. Try and get just a touch closer. Alright. See if we can't make a shot here. Oh! Smashed him. Right in the front shoulder. We're holding a little bit to the right on him because I thought the wind might push it, but... That's a solid hit on him. Might have actually got a single lung. I'm really happy with that. Alright, so let's watch him for a little bit and see what happens with him. We'll try and call him, slow him down a little bit. He might run a little ways. It might have been shoulder. But I'm just happy we got a solid hit on him. And it should bring him down shortly. So it looks like he's right over there. Let's put a dot on where he's about to be. Right about there. 178. All right, so we'll mark him there, and let's go over here now and go take a look at this monster whitetail shed. I said it looked like an elk, and I wasn't kidding, because look at the size of this shed antler. And let's pick it up. Like I said, I'm going to say he's going to be probably 185 or 190s, because he looks pretty big. Let's see what he's going to score. 100? And close to 190? That's going to be close to 190. Uh, Alright, so if this shed antler had a symmetrical side, it would actually score 188.4, which is an absolute giant whitetail shed. And that's 188 scoring high rack whitetail shed right there. So 
he is what we were actually looking for. We already got a 175.6 scoring. Um, uh, he's a pretty wide rack, sort of high rack buck, but this is a definite 188 plus high rack buck that we just found a shed from. All right, so it's been about seven or eight game time minutes now, and I can see the bobcat. It looks like he's bedded down, so let's go get him. All right, so here he is down right here. Let's take a look at him. Can't quite see where we hit him. Ooh. Can definitely see where we hit him. Look at that. The broadhead came out right behind the backside of the shoulder blade, so it definitely should have caught one lung on that. It was a little bit better of a shot than I thought. It definitely shouldn't have been body, but let's pick him up and see where we hit him and what he's going to score. It says body. It looked like a perfect shot, and he only scores 8.3, but let's take a look at that and see where we actually did hit him. All right, let's take a look at that. So it looks like we hit right in the neck, and it came out right in front of the front shoulder. We let him a little bit too much. I thought the wind was going to push it a little bit to the uh, left side there, but apparently it didn't push it much at all. Stayed in the exact same spot, but we got him, and I think that's going to be a pretty good way to end this video. So let's go head over to Trophy Lodge and go take a look at our mounter buck. All right, guys, here we are back at the Trophy Lodge, and here is our monster 175.6 scoring whitetail buck and here he is right here he is our first addition to our new lodge as you can see it's completely empty right now but he is definitely big enough to be here he is considered a true wall hanger in my books and probably in a lot of people's books so we'll keep him here and hopefully next we'll be able to put some more animals up here soon i was kind of hoping we'd find a nice 220 plus muley but we didn't even actually find one muley buck the whole hunt but we still found a giant white toe. And so, I think that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.